This is Bill Yang, a Star Rail character that is a recurring face from the game that you probably heard about. He's the connection that's linking both games together and the one who foreshadowed the eventual reveal of the game. But he's not alone. There are also other characters that share this connection, albeit in varying degrees. Today I want to tell you about these characters, I'll talk about how they are related and the reasons why you should watch them closely. This video is meant for people who has little knowledge of the Honkai series, but for you seasoned veterans, this video can still act as a refresher. So let's begin. World belongs to a group of characters that has appeared in previous Honkai games. This includes but not limited to Gun Girl Z and Honkai Impact 3rd. They're all mainly focused on the latter because that's the game I play. Anyways, Honkai as a series is built on the concept of multiple parallel universes. World Yang happens to be of the same iteration seen in Honkai Impact, while most other only have independent counterparts in Star Rail. And while Honkai players won't ever stop bringing up how a particular character has similar traits to their counterpart, like this video, we care because it can be used to anticipate certain events that the character may go through. And it often do be like that. In Honkai, Wild is what you call a Hersher. They're supposed to be powerful beings like Star Rail Eons. Though Wild has since given up most of this power, and in retirement, he uses a walking stick with a black hole creation device made from a Hersher's corpse to help him fight. The reason he traveled to Star Rail was neatly packed into a manga on the official Honkai manga website. Links below if you want to read it yourself. But basically, at the end of the Honkai story, the Honkai was defeated. But since then, a new threat has appeared in the form of aliens called the Sky People. These are inner dimensional invaders that gobble up planets to get stronger. They have a wide reach, being able to travel between dimensions, which included the Honkai Impact Dimension and the Star Rail Dimension. Well, after beating back the invasion on his home dimension, found out about this and decided to extend his hand to help the Star Rail Dimension defeat this impending attack. Why this specific dimension? Apparently, the Sky People had their eyes on this particular individual who looked like one of his dead students. This raises a few questions in Star Rail like when and where will the Sky People appear? Is this Steroron perhaps related to the Honkai? Questions I believe the devs will milk to the death. His story in Star Rail begins with him getting on the express apparently with another dude near a wreck of a spaceship, which may or may not have been related to the alien busting mission, but anyways, coincidentally the person that rescued them was Himiko, so saved a lot of time on his search. With the prospect of safeguarding her safety and currently being unable to go back to his world, World and his friend decided to stick around and travel with the express. At least that's the story he's willing to tell. As for the other guy with him, who we can see in this splash art, that's Void Archives, a sentient weapon made from a Hersher's corpse, which is why he has a weird name. In Honkai, he's either a grey antagonist or a sudden ally. He initially collaborated with the Sky People when they invaded, but then later turned around and stabbed them in the back, as he drags Wild along to join his alien busting adventure. This happened in the Honkai open world storyline, which isn't finished yet, so his real motivation is anyone's guess, really. His reputation as seen in Star Rail is as good as a Chinese knockoff product. He is described to be a pretentious up to no good asshole by many people. I added that last part in, but he apparently left the express sometime before the trailblazer came into existence, so he's out there somewhere with a high chance of becoming a playable character down the line. He looks like the Honkai mega antagonist which we will get to in a bit, but that's due to the fact that he stole one of his backup body and just rose with it. Anyways, before I move on to the next character, I also want you to take a look at World Splash Art which is one big nod to Honkai players. We already talked about World Archives, so let's look at the rest. Down here is Wild Joyce, the person who Wild Yang named himself after to honor his sacrifice, as his former name is actually this name I can't pronounce. Joachim Nokian Virtanen Himeko, along with the next few characters I'll be mentioning, belong to a group that doesn't seem that important right now, especially compared to the ones we already talked about, but perhaps have some chance of taking the spotlight later down the line. For Himeko, we know that she was the one who fixed up the express when it was broken many years ago, and today she acts as the navigator for the express, which is the extent of her significance right now. Currently, she has been sitting on the side and letting the rest of the crew do all the work, while sometimes providing air support with her orbital cannon when they were needed, which kind of make a lot of sense actually, considering she probably gonna need half of her time to disassemble and reassemble that thing every time she travels anyway. Jokes aside, her backstory in Star Rail can be summed up as if Honkai Himiko never became a Valkyrie. In both games, Himiko had a hard-on for astrology and space stuff. 
But unlike in Star Rail, Himeko in Honkai took the path of fighting Honkai by becoming a Valkyrie, which Wilt was kinda responsible for, which also technically led to her death, which can make you understand why Wilt sometimes acted quite protective over her, considering that her track record has been her eventually dying at some point. We cannot talk about Honkai without mentioning one of their core pairs. In Star Rail, Bronya and Seelay follow the same story beats as their previous appearances, both being raised in an orphanage but pulled apart by some kind of event. In previous game, it was a dangerous experiment that made Seelay turn quantum and disappear into the sea of butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> this set Bronya on a quest to rescue her, which she eventually did. In Star Rail, the roles are seemingly reversed, with Seelay being the one rescuing. Traditionally, Seelay, Seelay, whatever, would be the one you call the power bottom, if you don't consider the red one, who is her other personality, who also probably gonna top Bronya, who is also much closer to Seelay in Star Rail, just without the split personality. Usually, Kokodil would be the one constant that plays an important part in their relationship, whether it be taking care of one or either of them, or by being the obstacle that needs to be overcome to a degree. Losha is an interesting one. He's based off Honkai Impact Mega Antagonist Auto Apocalypse during the time he took his dead lover's corpse and traveled to China. He used to lock this coffin with her corpse around in the hopes of finding anyone that could help him, something he eventually succeeded much later. We know that the Xianzhou Alliance hates this immortality thing given by the Abundance, and then we have this dude who potentially uses a taboo Abundance healing magic, which is a big no-no for the Xianzhou people. He's described in a official media to be really suspicious and hiding something. And when we consider that the coffin he lugs around contains a stranger he met once which he happens to have taken a job to deliver to the Xianzhou, according to him. And with some speculation what the Xianzhou story isn't finished yet, if previous trends are supposed to be followed, whatever Lo Xia is trying to pull is probably not good. Su Xiang is a character whose backstory was pretty much copy-pasted over from Honkai Impact. In that game, she and Otto became travel companions during his journey to China, which, fun fact, Su Xiang initially commented on how beautiful of a woman Otto was and how he was her type, something she quickly retracts once she found out. Anyways, near the end of their journey, Su Xiang was gravely wounded and put into a cryopod, where she recovered and eventually reintroduced into the main Honkai story. Here in Star Rail, she's paired up with Losha and whether her fate will end the same way is something that I cannot say for certain at this moment. Other Honkai characters also make their appearance in Star Rail, but some are just too minor of a character or have way too little information to go off of. Yanxing is one such character. He appeared in an unfinished Honkai visual novel as a disciple of Fu Hua, who is also a character that will probably appear in Star Rail soon. From the info we currently have on her, she's the lead general of the Cloud Knights, who is really intent on eradicating the abundance. The only parallel I could think she will follow is her getting Julius Caesar. Because Fu Hua in Honkai used to take care of seven disciples which included Yan Xing, she tried to train them to follow her zero tolerance approach on Honkai. Basically, if you showed any signs of Honkai infection, that's it, you're just gone. But then trouble came when one of the disciples started showing signs. The rest knowing that their master will probably murder the person, conspired to take her out before she could do anything, which Fu Hua barely survived. So what we could expect from Hua in Star Rail is an emotionless killing machine kind of attitude. Someone who cares way too much about her job to the point that her colleagues started turning on her. Before I end this video, some of you might say that Kafka is also a Honkai character, which is technically true as she appeared as an art for an equipment in Honkai Impact. But really, that's more of an artistic inspiration than a character with their own story. So hopefully now that you reached the end of the video, I have made you understand why Honkai players never stop talking about these characters. It's the melancholy from looking at the infinite possibilities as the game likes to put it. Take Natasha. She has big responsibilities but always find time to take care of people. In Honkai, it's the orphans and here it's the clinic she runs, so on and so on. There were more characters that I could talk about but chose not to because they were leaked or currently have next to no information about them like Silver Wolf, which I can't say much about. So it's best to look at them when they eventually release. Thanks for watching and have a great day.